Well, this is an exciting package for me because inside this bubble wrap is a classic IBM ThinkPad laptop. So let's get it out and see what it looks like. The case uh, has you know, a couple of signs of wear and tear on it. You've got the classic latch uh, to get the lid open. And it's actually pretty uh, clean and tidy looking this. It's uh, not the most up-to-date machine. It is a Centrino Duo. Um, so it's uh, kind of good for Windows XP. Beyond there, the performance might not be the best. It's got the fantastic little joystick. They are lovely keyboards. It does have a rather small trackpad, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is possibly not working. So I do have a replacement part. And the great thing about ThinkPads is they're very modular. So you can, for example, um, there you go, pop out the DVD. And you can pop in things like batteries and hard disks. So I actually have a second hard disk adapter which will just slide in there so that's good I also bought myself a brand new Lenovo battery uh, to pop into this so I guess uh, next thing to do is hook it all up and check how it survived the post now I'm very pleased to say that this is a 90 watt power supply so if I choose to upgrade the processor um, which is possible on this machine and max out the RAM and all that good stuff, it should be able to cope. Okay, so the moment of truth. We have power, we have lights, we have the ThinkPad BIOS screen, we have Windows starting. Anyway, let's stop recording this and uh, cut back because it might take a while to boot up. Well, as you can see, we are now loading Windows 7 Pro. Uh, the screen, I have to say, looks great. Audio works. Got a few apps installed now. The trackpad, yeah, the trackpad isn't working, but the mouse is. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, it's all working really quite smoothly. I have to say, this is an old piece of kit, uh, but it's got the ThinkPad rock solid build. And uh, we have Wi Fi but I haven't connected it up. Uh, I want to check out uh, this build and make sure it's not got some horrible, horrible uh, stuff on. It's got open office. I'm probably gonna remove that and replace it with LibreOffice. Uh, unfortunately, got a bit of screen glare there. Let's, there you go. Um, so it's got open office rather than LibreOffice. So I'll probably take care of that at some stage. It's got Chrome, not my favorite browser. I'm more of a Firefox man myself. Startup, nothing in there. Um, there's not a huge amount on here, but it seems to be working pretty well. Let's have a look at the properties. I've got a little bit of weirdness here. It's a Dell branded version of Windows, uh, so that's a little bit concerning. Uh, apparently it's a genuine Intel T2300 1.6. Uh, might need to look into upgrading that to, I think it's the T... 2700. It's only got a gig of RAM. Uh, I can upgrade it to 4 gig, but with a 32 bit OS, you're only going to see about 3, 3.5. Three um, so that could be interesting to see how that works. And obviously, Service Pack 1, Windows 7 Pro, very, very nice. Uh, if we go to Device Manager, so we're in the Device Manager, and as you can see, everything is all configured. So nice job on there. Lenovo, Intel graphics, um, yeah, so 945. Uh, if it plays Crisis, I will be amazed with the Intel graphics. Uh, they are not the best, uh, it has to be said. Uh, CPU-wise, it's a T2300, um, which is, you know, not top of the line. Um, you can upgrade it to a Duo, as I uh, mentioned earlier, so... Um, that's definitely something to consider. I think they're under £20. Um, it does rather involve taking the machine apart, though, to get to that, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so here you go, T2300 1.6. Okay, well, I've uh, slightly customised the Windows build to hopefully speed it up. Let's see how long does it take for Writer to load. So... Um, 
It's going to take a while, I find, that even on my super duper desktop, um, it takes a little while to load up. And here you go. Oh, set up. So next, uh, let's uh, skip that. Okay, so it's taken a little while. Um, once it loads, I find if you quit it and then reload it, it tends to load quite quickly. So don't really need to see all the properties there. Um, not sure I want that. I might get rid of that bar. So let's quit it and reload it. So we're going to start it now. And about two, three seconds. So once you've loaded it, it's actually pretty quick uh, to reload. So that's pretty good. And what I basically did in this, I just uh, went to properties, advanced system settings, and then I customized for best performance, then just ticked a couple of options. Uh, and under advanced, I changed the paging file to be a preset size. And I tend to find on older kits that gets you pretty good performance. So I need to now um, check it out, make sure it's all good. And assume that is, I'll probably whack on a copy of Photoshop and I'm pretty much done. Uh, that's all I need it for. A bit of web browsing, a little bit of open office. Uh, as I say, I might upgrade it to LibreOffice and a little bit of uh, the odd Photoshop work. And it's a really good little unit. I absolutely love the keyboard. It's really, really nice. It's got a lovely tactile feel. Um, the sound buttons obviously they do seem to actually work you've then got the brightness controls for the lcd so you can get it nice and bright or dim it down to make the battery last a bit longer let's see does the oh the light works on the screen so there you go hold on don't know if you can see that oh a bit too close there it is so the little light comes on when you press function and the little button up here so in dark you can actually see what you type in excellent before battery saving i've actually got a plan here so plugged in um basically hardly anything happens and then on battery 10 minutes dim the display turn off the display after an hour put it to sleep after two hours and have a slightly dim uh, screen to try and preserve the battery so uh, i'm gonna have to trial that out but before I do that, I actually need to check out how much battery life I've actually got. It's currently charging and um, got 5% currently available, plugged in and charging. And I need to check out the actual battery specs because on these older machines, the batteries, sometimes you want to fully discharge them. Other times you never want to fully charge them. And with regard to this actual T60, uh, as you can see, it's got Lenovo branding on the screen, but on the actual base unit, it's got the rainbow IBM ThinkPad branding because the T60 actually came out when IBM sold uh, the laptop division to Lenovo. So you've got this weird kind of combo of Lenovo and IBM. And I have to say, I'm actually really impressed with this machine. It cost me less than £70 shipped. Uh, obviously this was extra and I've already included the price of buying a new battery in that total I gave you so for less than a hundred pounds you too can get yourself a lovely piece of uh, PC uh, history however it's still perfectly usable for basic tasks and instead of buying a netbook get yourself a ThinkPad they're lovely really well built this machine oh, it's got to be 10 years old and it's still going it still runs it can run Windows 7 it's not going to set any world records on speed and as long as you um, obviously prepare yourself for that it should be fine and as you can see I've got a nice little set of stuff already done let's load up calc just see how long that takes so that's going to take a little bit longer because I haven't loaded it yet but yeah four seconds so with LibreOffice and OpenOffice as I say when you first boot up they can be a little bit slow to start up once it's loaded once, you know, a couple of seconds it loads up. And if I was to fit an SSD to this, which I am tempted to do, uh, it would really make it fly. And then the current hard drive I've got in, I'd probably chuck in this spare bay. And um, away we go. 
Hello, uh, well it's a couple of days later and the memory and the trackpad have arrived. So what we're going to be doing is undoing some screws on the bottom. There's four, one here, one here, one here and one just up there. So I'm going to get that open and that will allow me to remove this panel here and replace the trackpad and the memory cards which are directly underneath it. So let's get the battery out and get the uh, motherboard discharged from any electricity and get myself all anti-staticed. We've got the four screws from underneath uh, removed so you basically just have to sort of hook your hands underneath the leading edge of this pad here and sort of just gently lift up and it should all come away. Now you have to be a little bit careful of removing this little cable. Now to replace the trackpad uh, you simply undo the four screws and then plug it back in and then you're away so I'll get that sorted out uh, off camera and then we're going to get the memory out. Now it's only got one gig at the moment so we simply pull those cables or little tags I should say to one side and that will pop out to the memory stick and then we just drop the new ones in. Uh, the memory drops in with the notch to the right. Um, so you put it in at a slight angle. You'd want to try and minimize touching the components as much as possible. And then, oh, yeah, that's seated. Click it in and then on top goes your next bit and job done. And that's it, not much to it. Uh, I'm going to keep this working chip in the packaging and that should uh, give me a nice spare one gig chip. Now these are two two gigs so I've got a total of four gigabyte fitted. Sadly due to some stupid limitation of the Intel chipset uh, only three I think it is of uh, the RAM is going to be fitted. Now I could have fitted a two and a one but then I wouldn't have a paired set of memory and that would in impact the performance slightly on the machine and being an old bit of kit although the performance is pretty decent every little bit of uh, performance you can squeeze out of the computer is welcomed so I've gone for paired memory and I didn't really want to stick to just two gig um, so you know fit two two times two gigs for a total of four sadly though uh, I'm not aware of a BIOS update that would even give you any more access but being a 32-bit OS anyway uh, running on this uh, particular CPU you can only reckon about recognize about three three and a half gig anyway so it's not like you're missing out massively it's just just a slight annoyance with the design of this older uh, chipset now I believe it's the T61 is slightly more up to date and will give you up to eight gigs um, but you know if you want the really nice keyboard um, once you get beyond the T60 product, uh, the keyboards and screens started getting a little bit variable in quality. Anyway, let's get this unit back together. So I've fitted the trackpad off camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit this cable, which is a little bit fiddly because I don't want to tear the connector. So that's clicked in place. You then get the pad here, you sort of hook it onto the front gently push it down and it should make a little click to say it's all in so I need to check that so I'm going to cut away and then uh, fire up the computer and make sure everything's working there's no horrible BIOS beep codes. Okay, so the moment of truth am I going to get BIOS beep codes or am I uh, going to boot up let's just see seems to be working looks like we have success so we're going to have to check on how much memory uh, is actually being recognised by the BIOS as I say. I'm expecting it to be about 3 gig available to Windows. Uh, I am looking at putting a Unix version in because I bought myself an SSD. Anyway, as you can see, Windows, not the fastest to start up off a regular IDE hard disk. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I've seen much worse and let's click on this user account and see where we get to. Um, as I said, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this. Uh, it's pretty smooth. 
The biggest problem I found with it with the one gig of RAM is it was running at 80 to 97% RAM usage so frequently that it started paging uh, memory out to the hard disk. So your hard disk was being used as a backup RAM. So I did tweak uh, the settings. I'm not sure that's quite showing up here. Uh, I might need to brighten the screen so it shows up a bit better. And when you go to properties, uh, where have we gone? Computer properties. As you can see, four gig of RAM with 2.99 gigabyte usable, 32 bit on a T300 at 1.66. Windows 7 Pro, uh, index about 2.4, that might go up a bit now I've fitted some RAM, but not by a huge amount. So anyway, um, as I say, the, the machine works pretty well. The trackpad, um, that seems to all be working. The one problem with the new one is this button here is a bit wonky, so I'm not sure whether I should take it out and refit it, or whether it, this button is just a little bit off. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that seems to be moving the cursor around just fine. So uh, I've actually got Pale Moon rather than Firefox installed because it's a little bit less memory usage. Uh, Pale Moon, I believe, is based off some old Firefox code and it loads up. Uh, I've got DuckDuckGo uh, with an ad block installed and that all seems to be working just great. So uh, let's have a look. Let's go to YouTube. And... As you can see, he's working on Wi-Fi. Seems to be loading up pretty smoothly. Uh, let's have a look. Um, what shall we have a look at? Well, we've got a Kickstarter on at the moment for a Cthulhu Wars board game. So let's call that up. And as you can see, lots of videos to pick from. There you go. Um, that's my look at the T60. So the next thing is, let's see about getting an SSD fitted and decide do I want to keep Windows or do I want to switch to FreeBSD or a version of GNU Linux, so Slackware, Debian, um, something like that. So can I have a think about that? Um, maybe going to try burning a live CD and see how this works with various things. Uh, I do quite like the look of BSD or uh, Slackware due to its... Um, kind of particular design ethos but I am probably more familiar with Debian so Debian which is the system D free version of Debian does appeal right now and although in some ways life might be simpler if I went to something like Ubuntu um, I, I don't know I, 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 I would much rather go with kind of vanilla Debian and to my mind these days Debian is the best version of that because it, it maintains the traditional kind of Unix way of doing things. Anyway, that is a whole another video, I'm guessing. 